Good morning. Good morning. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. It is 7.02 a.m. November 14, 23. How you doing? Uh, Doug Rava here. Tentative meeting IL. Um, um, you know, it's funny. It's a, it's a love-to-hate relationship. <laughs> uh, I know I'm not necessarily called to teach, but when something drops in your heart, you can study it out. You get at least at minimum share what the word is saying and uh this is the second time i've i've talked in you know multiple parts so you know hey we're gonna go with what we go with uh forgive me i haven't worn this shirt in a while so anyway um so let's go ahead and pray I've got quite a bit here and uh you know we just want to get through it all and uh, pray that it's a blessing to you so father we come to you right now in jesus name and Father, I, again, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the permanence, the foundation of your word. I thank you for the bedrock that is your word. And Father, this morning I ask you by your Holy Spirit, by a spirit of revelation and understanding, that you would unfold your word to us, that you would, by your Holy Spirit, you would cause your Logos word to become revelation become Rama. that would birth a new understanding and is about the subject matter. That, Father, you would move us from fear and angst and anxiety into hungering for more of you. And that's what this is all about, is hungering for more of you. Let us dispel myths. Let us gain understanding. Let us mature in our understanding. Let's just receive all that you have for us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Um, so where we're going to go, we got actually quite a bit. I had to write several of them down. I kind of went a different direction, but I, I knew what I needed to do. and It was not comfortable for me, so uh, this is what we're doing. So what I want to do is I want to actually... To, to do our best to stay away from hype. Hype, unfortunately, has, and I say fortunately slash unfortunately, has gotten a bad word, especially in the Pentecostal charismatic circles. Um, it's almost known that if you're not emotional, you're not experiencing God. That's, that's not true. That's not true. Um, you know, myself example, I honestly don't cry very much. And I know most men don't. You get me into the presence of God, and if I'm not the one ministering, even if I am the one ministering sometimes, I'm going to just weep like a baby. It It is what it is. I make no apologies for it. I've uh, I've always thought of it as a, kind of a, a barometric pressure. But here's what we want to do. So, so many times, tongues in the Bible, and let's face it, up front, there's no way of dismissing the subject of tongues when you're talking about the church, Jesus, the full Bible, all 66 books. It's there. Now, and I'll go with, I'm going to give a quick staple that I didn't have written down. Um, Hebrews says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. So all things in the word, the book of Revelation says, the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. This whole book is a book of prophecy, meaning prophecy, an inspired utterance written by the Holy Men of God, First Peter or Second Peter says that, the Word of God written under the inspiration of the, of the Holy Men of God, which meant the Holy Spirit was on them when they wrote. Therefore, the Bible is prophecy written down. It's just like Isaiah wrote it down, etc., etc. So, you can't take anything out of it. That's why the book of Revelation says, don't take out, don't put, do it, add in. Okay? So, in that regard, we cannot take out the pieces that we want and even change the pieces that make us feel more comfortable. Can't do that. 
And the reason you can't do that is, one, you're taking away the power of God. Okay? The Word is the Word. So, let's dive into this. Again, the, 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 the message on this is the purpose of tongues. What are they for? Are they just for us to sound weird and super spiritual in church service and I speak in tongues and you don't and da 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 da? You know, you know, someone who has eyesight does not brag to the person who is blind that they can see. They just don't do that. It's not, one, it's not socially acceptable, but even more so, it's not love. You would never think of doing that. You would never think of if someone's in a wheelchair and you're not, that I can walk and you can, no, I mean, you, that, that's not something you would do. That's not something that, that's not love, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to start with 1 Corinthians 13. Because 1 Corinthians 12 talked about the gifts of the Spirit and the body of Christ, okay? Now, to again lay that initial groundwork, we, we understand that according to Scripture, Tongues is the initial evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's not the only evidence, nor should it be the only evidence. Okay? It is the initial. Now, is it saying that you, know, you got baptized in the Spirit while you were praying for someone for healing, and then all of a sudden, tongues begin to roll out? I mean, you know, this is not completely a methodical thing. Okay? but understanding the concept of it. If you're baptized in the Spirit, there should be a release of a heavenly language. And, and that's not a condemning thing. That's not a condemning thing if you have not released a, even, even if I can say, a full release of it, okay? It's not, that's not the point of it. The point of this is to gain an understanding of it to where we remove some of the Unknown, some of the fear, some of the angst around it, because I just don't understand it. If you don't understand something, you automatically, it's a human nature to back away from something. Okay? So let's add, let's gain understanding by knowing what this book says about it. So the first one, 1 Corinthians 13, and I'm going to read these. I'm not going to read the whole chapter, of course. I've got most of the chapter written down. But I'm not going to read the whole chapter. I'm going to read the specific verses, and you can follow along. This is basically I'm covering 1 Corinthians 13 and 14. I don't believe I'm going into 15. No. So basically, 13, 1, and then most of chapter 14, 1 Corinthians 14. So feel free to read it for yourself. It's not a hidden book, right? We all have one. 13, 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men... And of angels, but have not love, I become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. So let's start with that. Tongues, we don't understand it. Hebrews says that are not angels ministering spirits to the heirs of salvation? Are we actually speaking to angels? Well, it says speaking with the tongues of men and of angels, so I'm going to take the word verbatim for what it says. So by faith, I'm saying the angels that I have access to, and we don't worship them, we understand that. But when I understand that angels are ministering servants to the heirs of salvation, okay, and actually Revelation says we will judge angels. I think it's Revelation or is it Peter, one of the two, forgive me. Uh, the point is, there's a bit of a, and we don't know what, it, what part it is. We don't need to know. We just know that when we're praying in the Spirit, I have no doubt that there's, there's times that the angelic hosts that are serving us, according to what the Word says, they are hearing what we're saying. Now, we don't know what we're praying. So I've heard someone say a long time ago, we don't need to know what we're praying. Unless God gives us the interpretation, that's a God thing, okay? Now, we can also pray for the interpretation, but at the end of the day, let's, let's not get too stuck on it. Let's stay with what it's saying, okay? Now, we're going to skip ahead. So that's ten, uh, tongues of men and of angels. Um, and, of course, it goes through the love chapter, okay? But let's go into 
chapter 14, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and verse 2. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. So this kind of goes back with what we talked about yesterday. It's a hidden language. It's a secret language. It's a form of communication that the enemy cannot understand because it's a faith language. We speak by the spirit, as I should say, we speak by faith under the utterance of the Holy Spirit. The enemy can't understand faith. It's invisible to him. He understands fear, right? Fear you can see. Faith you cannot see. You actually look kind of dumb sometimes when you're standing in faith. It doesn't make it any less real, right? So what we're saying there is, for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to God, but, uh, but, but speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. 14.4 He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. Now, we want to focus on the tongue part here. Not not dividing. I'm just we're talking about tongues. We're not talking about prophecy right now. We're talking about tongues. He who speaks in tongues edifies himself. Now it's it's interesting because uh, the book of Jude talks about praying in the Holy Spirit, building your most holy faith. I've mentioned that several times on here. Fourteen four. It uses the word edify. Look that up real quick. And it literally in the original language meant house builder. I didn't write down the Greek number on it. You can do it for yourself if you have a concordance. Um, as a matter of fact, there is actually, a, just not a plug for them, but there's actually a free Bible concordance. It's only in King James, but it gives all the numbers. You can just click on it and see what the number is. It's a free app. Download it. It's great for Bible study. You know, hey, I don't have all my stuff with me. I'm waiting in the car to get my car serviced. Do a little Bible study and find out what the words mean. So it's a great tool. Anyway, so... Edify there in verse four in verse four means to build a house. So, so let's put that in context. He who speaks in a tongue is a house builder to himself. I'm building myself up in faith. Most every good spirit filled minister who ministers by the Spirit, you see a demonstration of the power. Most of all of them, I always see them. There's times that they will be praying in tongues out loud. It's not a tongue and interpretation. We're not going to go there on that. It's They're building themselves up in faith. It's not something to be interpreted. It's the Holy Spirit praying within him, building his faith up. Okay? So, um, we're going on to verse 14 and 5. I'm sorry, verse 5. He says, I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesied. So he's saying here, I wish you all spoke with tongues. This is Paul talking. Okay? 14 and 14. Chapter 14 and verse 14. For I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. So, if I'm sensing a weakness in my faith, if I sense I need to pick me up, I've had a bad day, I've had a rough day. I have that time in the car on the way home. It's a really good time to pray in the Spirit. Out loud. Get past how it sounds. Out loud. You're by yourself. Nobody else cares. Okay? Make sure you're not on speakerphone. But it says, For I pray in a tongue, my spirit is praying. My spirit is edifying me. It's encouraging me. I'm sensing the presence of God begin to churn. Jesus said, Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. That is indwelling of the Holy Spirit, okay, with that prayer language that we received, speaking with other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance, His Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit within you, is beginning to turn, is beginning to overtake, overtake uh, what the world threw at us that day, okay? It's a weapon. It is a weapon unto victory, okay? 14 and 15, what, again, we're still 1 Corinthians 14, verse 15. What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the Spirit. 
I didn't say you'd sound like Carrie Job. I will sing with the spirit, and I will also sing with the understanding. I believe a lot of this is our prayer closet time, okay? I believe much of our praying in the spirit, much of it, should be done in our prayer closet time, okay? That's not a thus say it the Lord. That's just saying, I'm understanding that because number one, now I, I have I've I've sang in tongues with people before. Uh, it doesn't happen a lot. I'm not gifted in that range anymore, but I will still do it if I'm led to do it. The point is, he says I will pray in the spirit, and I will sing in the spirit. I'm going to do both as an act of worship. Let's face it, an act of worship is I'm laying myself down to do that. I'm yielding myself to what the Spirit of God is wanting to do. Okay. Verse 18, <laughs> he just spells it out. I thank my God, I speak with tongues more than you all. Let's just call it to the carpet. Okay. Uh, verse 20. Brethren, do not be children in understanding. That's where I, I talked about earlier. You know, we can choose to build a wall up around things we don't understand, or we don't embrace, or we don't like, because we don't understand it. Or this person does it all the time. I just can't get, I just can't figure it out. Okay. Well, he's not asking you to figure it out. It's a spirit thing. Just like being born again. You didn't figure it out. It's still something that had to happen down here. Now we understand we hear the gospel, but it comes down here. Unless you're born again down here, and the Spirit of God is dwelling down here, what well, I mean that's a that's a different discussion. And it's a needed discussion. All of these things, as he as Jesus talked to Nicodemus, these things are done of the Spirit, not of our understanding. These things are done of the Spirit. It says, incline thy ear. He's not talking about your ear. He says, incline thy ear. If you're hearing it and you hear it for the, a different, the same thing, but you heard it differently, yield to that. Listen to that. Let that hunger arise. So, Brethren, do not be children in understanding, which means do not let your understanding not grow. However, in malice be babes, but in understanding be mature. So we need to get a hold of this. Again, as I talked about yesterday, <clears throat> say your background, your denomination, whatever. I, I don't like getting that word denomination out there, but whatever your background is, it kept saying, teach this, teach this, teach this. Okay, well, is it lighting up is it balanced according to what this book says? If your background doesn't, <clears throat> I challenge you to read and study this for what it says, not for what you've been taught that it says. Open it up for yourself. Okay? Um, that's verse 20. Now we're going to go over. And I know this is going really quick, but it was the best way I knew how to do this. Because these are, if you will, the bullet points, the talking points of what Paul talked about. The rules governing tongues, if you will. Okay? Uh, 14 and 22. And actually, yeah, we'll go back. 14 and 21 and 22. Um, in the law it is written, with men, with men of other tongues and other lips, I will speak to this people. And yet, for all that, they will not hear me. Verse 22, Therefore, tongues are for a sign, not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. But prophecy is not for unbelievers, but for those who believe. So, therefore, tongues are for a sign, not for those who believe, but to unbelievers. Let's go back to Acts 2. They came out, they were speaking with other tongues, okay, and I've said this, I've said this uh, uh, many, many times, and it still bears true. They each heard them speaking in their languages. 
So you've got 120 guys coming out of the upper room, all speaking with other tongues. Three different people from three different languages heard one of the disciples speak in their language at the same time. Physically impossible to do that. You cannot speak in English, French, and Spanish, or English, French, in, in any three languages. Pick one. Pick, pick three. I cannot do that to uh, someone speaking each of those languages, and it all come out right. Okay. Remember, these were fishermen. Okay. <laughs> These were fishermen. Um, it says later in Acts that they were untrained men. So no, this did not really actually happen, right? It's supernaturally they each heard that language. So, so what he's saying there is this was a sign. This was a sign that they came out with stammering lips and unknown tongue, and they appeared to be drunk. Now, the drunk part for fishermen is probably not too much of a stretch. The speaking in other languages, that's, you know, what? What's going on here? Okay? So, and they and it says, what must we do to be saved? So they were unbelievers. Okay? Let's, let's just break it down. So, and to wrap it up, 1439. Therefore, brethren, desire earnestly to prophesy, and do not forbid to speak with tongues. With all these rules, let's not forget step one. Okay, now there's rules only to govern it and to ensure that it's done decently in an order, but let's not throw, throw the baby out with the bathwater. To say that we don't understand, is there an interpreter, is there not, is there, did, let God handle that. Okay, the same spirit that gives the gift of tongue or the, or our prayer language, same Holy Spirit, is the one that if there's an interpretation to be had, it'll be had. He, he handles that. Just like the same Spirit of God that leads us to salvation is also the same Spirit of God that leads us into deeper worship or that heals the sick or brings miracles. It's the same Holy Spirit. So, um, I don't know if I should apologize if I sound like I'm being forceful on this, but again, I'm, I'm, I'm of the persuasion we as people, especially, well, people this day and age, the more we don't understand it, and the more sometimes we see things being done or used out of context, the more it adds confusion. So let's keep it according to the word, and let's embrace all that he has for us, okay? Even if we don't understand it. That's fine to not understand. Let the Holy Spirit teach us, because Jesus said the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. He will bring to your remembrance the things I've told you. One of the last things I want to share with this is perfect love casts out fear. Um, I heard a talk one day, and I, I, it kind of resonated with me. Um, there's a guy on, on YouTube. His name's Chris Reed. I, I don't know him. I, I, I know his videos. He doesn't know me. Um, but he said, he brought out very important, it's like, perfect love casts out fear. It doesn't say perfect love casts out all fear. The fear of the Lord is still something to be received. Okay? Um, so, Father, right now we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your word. I ask you, Lord, for visitations today. Divine appointments. That your Holy Spirit would be poured out. Stir within us a hunger for your th for the things of the Spirit of God, according to what's in your word. And we thank you for it right now, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you for watching. Blessings. See you tomorrow.